Hey guys, we're going to talk about something we normally don't talk about. I normally don't talk about. In the Constitution, if you get your Constitution out and you look at the Amendment 14, it was ratified in 1868. And it says, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the states within where they, re they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunity of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of laws. Now, I, I was dwelling into this. In 1866, the original Constitution toleration of state differences with respect to internal treatment of rights came to an end in the aftermath of the Civil War. The immunities of citizens with respects to rights previously secured only by from abridging acts of Congress were recast in the 14th Amendment as immunities secured also for any similar act by any state. It was precisely in this ma manner that the citizens' right to keep and bear arms, formerly only protected by acts of Congress, came to be equally protected from any abridging acts from the states as well. If you don't understand that, it means that uh, the Second Amendment was the only thing protecting, uh, con getting, keeping Congress from passing any firearm laws. The same thing holds for the states according to the 14th Amendment. So in reporting to the 14th Amendment to the Senate on behalf of the Joint Committees on Reconstruction in 1866, Senator Jacob Merritt Howard of Michigan began by detailing the first section of that amendment. The section that relates to the privileges and immunities of citizens. He explained that the first clause of the amendment, once approved and ratified, would refrain, would restrain the power of the states, even as Congress was already restrained by the Bill of Rights from, abridge, from abridging. So, this, so your states and your Congress and, and the federal government, they are breaking the Constitution by passing firearm laws. They're breaking the Constitution. They're breaking their oath of office. These kind of people need removed. They, they want you to follow their laws, but they don't follow the Constitution. And the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Period. And this stuff is reaching a fever pitch here because it's not going to go on. <clears throat> but like I said, you know, uh, it, the 14th Amendment was put in place so that the citizens' rights to keep and bear arms, formerly only protected by acts of Congress, came to be equally protected from abridging acts from the states as well. The 14th Amendment was enacted to restrain, restrain the states from abridging personal rights that were already federal protected. And that's what they're doing in California. That's what they're doing in New York. That's what they're trying to do in Virginia. They're trying to take away your rights. And these people don't have the right to do that. They don't have the power to do that. It wasn't vested in Congress. It wasn't vested in the states. So there you go on the 14th Amendment, people. I thought it was important enough that you should know what the heck's going on. These people are trying to pull the wool over your eyes. It's for the birds. They cannot and they do not have the power under the law to pass these kind of acts or anything that has to do with infringing upon your rights to keep and bear arms. That means no background checks. That means uh, you don't have to worry about concealed carry, permits, 
you don't have to bow to the government or to the states. That's what they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know that you have the right. They don't have the right to pass the laws. Okay, thanks for watching.